Well, hi guys. As you can see, today's a little bit different. Um, we're going to be doing a little chat. I'm going to have a little chat on what I look for on my sounder when I'm fishing offshore and whereabouts I anchor on the reef. I have to apologise for my writing. I know it's not the neatest, but hopefully as I explain it, it'll make sense. Anyway, as you can see the board in front of you, I've got on one side here, I'll use my little ruler, sounder, okay? Same GPS marks, but what I look for. And then on the other side, I'll sort of discuss on how I, how or where I anchor and what, when I'm fishing offshore, especially live baiting or float lining for big snapper and Jews and cobia. Anyway, let's get started. Up the top here, you can see just a basic picture. Say we're in 30 metres of water here. And this is what most, pe what most people see. Every time I go out in a boat with somebody new, they've always got this basically default setting on their sounder and wondering why they don't see many fish or they're all going out there looking for this big magical like two or three metre ledge. They are there, yes, but they are hard to find. And there's not that many and when you do find them, usually there's about 100 boats sitting on it. So the best way, what you think to do, as I explain here. Okay, so here you've got usual sounders. You go out, say, the 18s, 30 metres, and you're going to see fairly flat bottom, a couple of little dots down here. I don't know if you can see the dots, but a couple of little dots, even a couple of little dots up here. And most people don't look too hard at that, and I think it's, you know, interference or something on the sounder, and keep moving, looking for their big magical two-metre ledge. But once you get used to your sounder and you can, they've got bottom locks on them, you can zoom into the bottom like five or ten metres. And that's what I do. I zoom in about five metres, sometimes ten metres from the bottom. So from the top to the sounder to the bottom, that's usually five or ten metres. And when you do that, different ball game. You'll see like here, this is the same, same, basically this is the same area. So most people see, this is what I see. Once it's zoomed in, you'll see the bottom, you'll see little ledges and bumps all over the place. You'll see lots of little dots, which could be bait fish, trade dew, reef fish, all sorts of things. But in amongst those, if, you keep, if you're looking closely, especially on like Lorance, I'll see, you'll see bright red dots. See these bright red dots around the, the baits on the edges, on little bumps? Generally, they're snapper and big snapper. So you know you're in a good spot to fish. Um, it probably shouldn't go uphill there. It should be just fairly flat. <coughs> This should be just like the like outside edge or bottom edge. And you'll see like lots of little dots on the edges, always on top. And like I said, up a bit high in a water column, the red, red dots here, they're snapper. If you see the bigger red dots down here, on the close to the bottom, sometimes they are reds, but 90% of the time they're actually dewfish sitting down there behind the bait on, on the outside edges of the reef or the bottom edges, okay? And if you're looking for cobia, well, cobia is quite easy. You just look for a bait school. They could be anywhere in a reef at all. They don't have to be on the outside edge. Wherever the bait's holding up on the reef, cobia will be around the bait. And generally on the sounders, when I tune them in, they'll show up as little arches. Only small, but you'll see little arches around the bait pools. 90% of the time, they're cobia. Okay? So basically, most people, sound not set up properly, is going to see this couple of dots and just keep going out looking for their big you know, magic high rise two meter ledge. But when you zoom them in five to 10 meters at the bottom, different ball game. You'll see a lot more structure. Uh, you'll see a lot more definition at the bottom and you'll see a lot more like bait fish, reef fish, and the bigger dots are generally dew fish, snapper. Like I said, little arches are cobia. So if you look more at this picture here, you'll see a couple of scattered ones on the outside edge of the reef here. Down, right down hard on the bottom, they're more than likely dewfish. You've got one up here on the, right on top of the reef, a bit of bait here either side of him, and there's a big red dot, that's more than likely a snapper. Okay. So learn how to zoom in on your sound and zoom in to like five or 10 meters and go and have a look. The bottom definition, it will change dramatically at what you see. I'm sitting out on, I have, this happens to me all the time. Some of the guys I fish with know this and they laugh. We're sitting out on the 18s, and we're looking at this, we probably have a Julia or a Snapper or something on deck already. We have guys coming past that think they're going to mark our spot. They come past and you can see the big 12-inch screen, you know, nice big boat. And you can see quite clearly in the screen, especially the darks, and most of you know I fish at dark. That's all I see is a big, like a straight line. These guys are going past, and every now and again we hear a snide comment saying, look, this idiot, 
What's he fishing on? We hear that and we've probably got a Jew fish or two on deck or a big snapper. They're just laughing at him. People have no idea. Zoom into the bottom. Get a better idea of what's actually under you. Okay? And just on the bottom picture here, this is like most sanders now. You can have a split screen. So that's your normal screen. So 5 down to 30. And if you look closely, there's a couple of small dots there and a little dot here and a little dot there. Most people don't look too hard at that, just think it's interference or don't even notice it and go straight past. But in, real, in fact, when you zoom in and have a look, that's a bait school sitting there. There's bait down there and there. Here's a couple of red dots, snapper. That's what you see when you zoom right into the bottom. Different ball game. Okay, get out of that mode. Get into that mode. And train yourself to get in this mode and you'll see a lot more. And when you do this, you'll actually see a lot more of your little one meter and two meter ledges. Quite a, there's quite a lot of them down there. But when you zoomed out and defaults like that, you don't see shit. You can see that little lump there, the fish on it, that's that lump there. That's what it looks like. Two changes. Okay? So, get into the habit of working the bottom five safe. I usually run five meters in close, ten meters out wider, and it will change everything. It really will, guys, and your fishing. It really change. Next thing. Seems it's well really rough weather and we're not going fishing and even outside at the moment it's like it's blowing us ass off, it's overcast, it's raining. It's a horrible year and some guys have asked me to do anchoring but can't get out so I thought we'll just start off by, by chatting about it. And when I get out fishing or tr try to get a bit more in depth with it, okay. So first of all you can see up here most people anchor and fish here which is true. You'll see here I've got reef, nice chunky reef, a little bit of a lump. And then it drops off and flattens out and there's your outside edge like your outside edge of the reef. I've got here back or outside edge starts here so you can see where it drops off a bit. Sometimes it tapers down slowly but you just have to you know use your sounder and pick that up yourself. But usually on the edge of the reef you'll find more bait fish okay and around the bait fish you'll once again if you're in a good area you'll see a couple of dots. You won't see a lot of dots but you'll see two, one, two, three, maybe four. You're not going to see 20 or 30. Don't look for 20 or 30. Look for two or three, and you're in a good area, okay? So most people see reef like this, and they see a little bit of bait down there or reef fish. So they drop anchor, they work out their drift, they drop the anchor onto the reef, boats above the reef, lines going down into the reef. When most of your big fish are out here on the, like on the edge or the southern edge or outside edge, traveling up down hard against the reef, picking off these bait fish sitting out there, okay? What I do is I drop anchor on the reef, same deal and then I let quite a bit of anchor, anchor wrap go because I, I actually drift anchor quite a long way from where I want to fish if I'm using an actual anchor because I use a, I use a sand anchor well a trip system because it holds and you get them off very easily on the reef and I drop it a long way back away from where I want to fish and let quite a little let a lot of rope go just to make sure the anchor grabs. And once the anchor grabs, if I pull up short, I'll just let more rope go, more rope go, until I know, because I'm in GPS, I've got my mark, I can drift back into my mark, and then hopefully the boat's just on the edge of the reef here, and my live baits and float line and baits are going down here off the back edge, or the outside edge, depending on the current and the wind. Because you will see your scattered bits of piece, scattered fish and bait fish and stuff throughout the reef, and a few trag. You can fish on the reef if you want to chase a few trag or maybe a couple of squire for a feed and lots of bite and well, lots of undersized things. But if you're chasing good fish, you want your boat anchored on the on the edge of the reef and you want your baits off the edge. Okay, because most of the bait fish are around off the edges and around the bait fish, obviously, you got up here a bit higher. That'd be snapper right down here in the corner on the bottom below the bait. That'd probably be a big Jew. So that'll be, that'll be me with a live bait. I'll have a live bait sitting straight down here, waiting for the dewy, just off the edge of the reef. Okay? And float line, float line will be going down and out past these snapper. I don't fish actually on the reef. Oh, your board's falling over, bugger. I fish, I have the boat on the reef, I fish just off the reef. Okay? Hopefully this is making a bit of sense to you. It does take a bit of practice, a bit of trial and error. And a lot of these reefs I fish for this, I've marked out on my GPS over the years, so I've got a, I've got an idea on what shape they are and know where the edges are. So I've taken it's, it takes a little while to get used to it. And as I'm driving around and I see 
and I've got it zoomed in and I'm seeing little bumps and lumps and where it flattens off, I'll mark, 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 and after a while you'll get a picture of the reef you want to fish and you'll know where to fish. Okay? Here's just a basic, say this is a reef that I've basically made out of GPS. There is one out the outends, roughly this sort of shape. North side, you know, south side, west, east. So I never eat soggy weed picks. That's a good way to remember it. <laughs> okay, most of the big snapper and dewfish we catch on these reefs. So the north and the western side, we very rarely fish and very rarely catch fish on. Don't know why, it just, it just doesn't really happen. And if you've got a strong easterly current, not a strong easterly wind and not much current, you can fish this side, but we don't really catch a lot. Of course, you catch occasional dewy and stuff, but I've got to do a lot of trips to catch them in there. I don't know why, it's weird. And if you've got a southerly current pushing down, like an northerly current pushing north, and you've got a fish off the top edge, once again, don't you generally catch a lot of fish doing that for some strange reason. It's weird. Have caught them, yes, but we'll put a lot of time in to do it. So if you've only got a little bit of time out there in between work or and the current's all messed up, and don't get the shits and go home. Um, it will be a bit harder fishing, but still, stay there, fish these edges. The fish are there at times, occasionally, that we do get them. It's rare, but you do get them, so don't give up and go home. Enjoy the night, you just put all the time and effort in getting the boat in the field to go out there. Fish these edges, if there's any edges you can do with, if you've got a, like a strong easterly wind, or an orderly card or something, fish these if you can. But hopefully, most of the time you've got a southerly current running south and over winter with the best time of year you've got the westerly winds so most of the time you can fish the south or the east sides and this red line here is just generally where we find the bigger bigger snapper and jewies okay so generally they're on the outside edge so i was talking before outside edge and the southern edges of the reef that's where you want to fish okay and if you've got an old-fashioned anchor like me or like i did in the old boat You'd have to get the westerly winds and a light current to fish the outside edge. And if you've got a southerly current and just a light northerly or westerly or easterly, doesn't matter, you can anchor your boat here and fish the bottom edges. If, well, most people now have got electric engines and spot lock, which changes the game. So if you can spot lock and you've got a southerly, southerly current, go out here onto the eastern side. You don't have to worry about wind, you can go out here. Spot lock here and fish here, or spot lock, lock here and just fish right next to the ledge. Go off the ledge a little bit, spot lock, and fish right on the ledge. It changes the game. You can pretty much fish anywhere spot lock. But once again, want the bait off the reef, just off the reef. You don't want to be fishing on the reef. You don't want to be fishing here, you want to be fishing here. Okay? And all that, that that's just basically off, off just a little map and basically where I fish with an anchor. So westerly winds, light current, I'll fish on the outside edge. I'll go along the edge, because like I said, I've got them mapped out pretty well. I'll go along the edge until I find a bit of life of like a couple of dots or a little bit of bait with a couple of dots, and then fish like this section here or off this point here, or okay? If it's a strong northerly current, uh, wind or a strong southerly current, you gotta fish down here. So basically I'll motor along. Once again, I've got the, these mapped out pretty well, so I'll go along until I find some a bit of life. So I'll be looking for these dots. If I see these dots down deep or just up at the bottom, along here or here, that's where I'll drop the anchor and fish. Or if you've got a spot lock, you can pretty much spot lock right on it and fish over these fish. It changes the game. Okay. Um, that's just the basics of it. Hopefully one of these days, maybe this year, probably next year, the way the weather's going, might actually get offshore and actually catch some fish and show you how we anchor. The boats I'm fishing on are fairly big, so we actually using actual anchors. So, so we'll be we'll be teaching you whereabouts on the roof we sit, depending on the wind and the current. But all I can say is, when you get out to these places, you got an idea roughly where the edge is. Stop your boat, just stop dead, give it five minutes, and see which way you drift. See if the current's stronger than the wind, or the wind's stronger than the current and see which way you drift. And then you can go up and then whatever, say uh, you're drifting to the southeast, you stopped here and you started drifting to the southeast, there's a slight current, but there's a bit more westerly wind, so you're drifting that way. So you go back up your line you drifted on, and you want to drop the anchor here, so you're fishing the edge, you go up here and you drop the anchor about here. And you drift back down that line and stop, and hopefully fish on that, on that ledge before you drift over it. And if you've got spot lock, well, just motor up, push GPS, sit there, cheap, but that works well too. <laughs>
anyway, um, I hope that I hope that helps, guys. Gives you an idea of where to fish. Um, just once again, drill it in your head. Don't fish on the reef. Fish off the reef. Have the boat over the reef. Your bait's off the reef. Okay, because that's where the biggest snapper and jewies are. And once again, cobia. If you're looking for cobia on the reef, I don't follow this pattern for the cobia. What I do is find bait balls. So if you find bait, bait could be anywhere on the reef at all. It could be down this corner, that corner over here. Wherever you find the bait, you set up your drift or anchor around the bait balls. Because when you cobia around, you'll see the bait ball here and you'll see little arches around it. So the bait ball could be here, right in the middle, or just here. And that's you'll see bait ball and you'll see arches. The cobia are there. Or it could be over here, or it could be down here, or it could be right down here on another reef. Wherever you find the bait and the little arches, that's cobia. So this goes out the window for the cobes. This only works well for this pattern sort of the, for Jews and big reds. Okay? And if we're out on the 50s, well, we don't anchor anyway. We just go, we find a patch of pearlies or whatever, and we just drift over the reef. But that's a discussion for another day. This is enclosed, chasing big fish enclosed. Hopefully it works. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks, guys.